It's about 10 o'clock at night here. We're all done for the day. And the milk truck just showed up. He's picking up the milk. The guy just went inside. He's taking a couple samples of our milk tank. And then they can tell the components of the milk from each individual farm. So we might have a higher percent fat or lower than the last farm that got picked up. And then everyone knows what they produced. So this is what he's going to use to take a sample out of our tank. So he's just going to hook his milk line up from the truck into our tank. Well, when I unloaded the plant, it might be three or four hundred liters there. Not enough to come back. This sample we take for an antibiotic test to right. make sure that it's antibiotic free. So this one goes to the lab in Alberta. Okay. Right. Where they check it for antibiotics and for bacteria and for fat and all that. And they grade this one. This is strictly for us if we go in and we test positive. We have a backup sample to double check it against to make sure the plant at their testing machine is accurate. So those were the samples he took out of the milk tank. He used the cane right here. And they're really, really careful to make sure that there's no bacteria contaminated. This thing sits in chlorine so that they can't contaminate it from farm to farm. The black knob and yeah. the canister. Yeah. That's a filter. Okay. It filters out the air so that when I purge this line, I'll hook up this line to this. Alright. Okay. That's air. But it's clean air. It's not off straight out the truck. Okay. That filter itself, just to keep from contaminating the milk, is three hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. Just for a filter. And we're talking like an air filter. So, so when the tank is empty, you're gonna hook the end of that line up to that. Yes. Blow the air through the line so it's empty. Yep. So oh, that's sweet. No cross contamination or anything. Oh, yeah. Then I close the valve so that when I go to the next farm, you saw I hooked up to the tank. And then I made sure there was nothing coming back. Oh yeah. Because if it bubbles into your tank, I've contaminated you. Yeah. Now if the guy before you had positive. Yeah. And I don't know that yet because I picked him up just before you, right? Yeah. And you have positive, so which one of you gets paid We'll have a little bit coming out, but not much. And since the pump's still running, I've got suctions. Can I put the clean up before I eat? Can I hook it up? Like I said, it's filtered air, so there's no contamination from the compressor. Okay. Open the valve. This is all food grade hose. Sanitized every night at the plant. So this milk tank can hold 8,600 liters of milk. Uh, he can suck it out of the tank in about 500 liters a minute. So we had 17,000-ish liters tonight. So it took about 34 minutes for him to suck the milk out of that tank into his truck there. He just pulled the milk hose here through this little flap in the front of our barn. And that just makes it easier. And especially in the winter time, if you had to string it through that door, it would get pretty cold in the barn real quick. Just uh, clean up. So you guys just saw the truck leaving there. He picked up the milk. The last thing he did right before he left was put this tank into wash mode. Every milk trucker does that because we don't want to be doing that at two in the morning if they come that late. Um, this tank needs to be rinsed and fully sanitized before we start milking in the morning. So we would need to get up like two hours earlier 
if they didn't do that. So it's awesome that the milk truck returns the sanitizer on and gets this tank in wash mode. Just milking cows here this morning. Uh, the first group's in there and they're already scraped and raked the beds. I'm just gonna come back here now and check if anybody's calving. Check the ladies, see if there's any calves walking around. Well, it looks like there was a baby in there, a little bull calf. Got him in his pen here. He's completely covered in crap because he was in the alley there, but he should be good now. Done milking in the morning here. I got one cow to treat before I go and feed the cows. Uh, she just calved maybe a week ago, not quite, and she's not doing so well. So we're gonna treat her. We're gonna pump her with some fresh cow chow, and she needs some medicine as well. So we got the fresh cow chow. We're gonna give that to her, and we also got some antibiotics here. Antibiotics, they're a bit of a controversial thing in animal farming, but as a dairy farmer, it's pretty black and white to us. We have a tool here that we can make sure this cow doesn't get even sicker or maybe even die, so why not use it? We take every precaution to make sure it doesn't end up in the end consumer product. We're not gonna milk her into the tank for four days after her last treatment of these antibiotics. And that's why I got these red bands here. We're gonna put them on her legs, and that way the milkers in the parlor will know to dump her milk and not put it into the milk tank. So you guys maybe notice she keeps putting her head that way and I think she knows that she has a little bit of a horn here and not on the other side. Cows that have a little bit of a horn like that, they know they have it and they can just get it in you and that's how they kind of butt other cows around and that's why she keeps putting her head this way because she knows that she can get me with that horn so I just gotta be super careful.
She should be all good now. We're gonna put her back onto the special needs pack here. This is the Saskview Farm Solutions route truck. Saskview Farm Solutions is the dairy dealership that we're with. They installed our De Laval parlor and they put all the architect stalls in our barn and everything from the ventilation, the calf pens, everything they installed. This is their route truck, so they come by probably once every month or so and top off all our chemicals, our iodine, all the consumables, even milk filters, milking gloves, everything that we use on a daily basis and go through, they top it off. This is pretty handy because then we don't have to go to the city and grab all that stuff. We just don't have to worry, it's always dropped off and uh, we never have to worry about grabbing it ourselves. They'll also take all of the empty chemical totes and uh, reuse them. Before we end today's video, I wanna say thanks to all the milk truckers out there. As dairy farmers, if someone's talking about dairy farmers, they think, oh, that guy's up seven days a week, super early in the morning, 365 days a year. But it's not only dairy farmers, it's also milk truckers and you know, if there's milk being produced, it needs to be picked up. So they're out there every single day of the year, just like we are, picking it up on Christmas morning, Christmas Eve, every single day. And uh, it's all part of that goal to get the quality product to the store shelves and the grocery store. There's people in the processing plants. Uh, it's not just dairy farmers. There's a ton of people that play a really big part in that. But that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram, at SassDutchKid, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.